years ago, Princess Elizabeth, as she was, discovered she'd become queen after the death of her father, George VI. Today, in a statement to mark the anniversary of her accession, she renewed her vow to serve and said she was deeply moved by the support she's received. The main events marking the Diamond Jubilee will take place over the summer. Today, it was a quiet visit to Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Our royal correspondent, Nicholas Witchell, reports. She has recommitted herself to serve, renewing the pledges she made at the time of her accession. In a Diamond Jubilee message, the Queen has said she's been deeply moved by the messages of support she's received as she marks the 60th anniversary of her coming to the throne. At King's Lynn Town Hall, where photographs of previous visits by the royal family are on display, the Mayor delivered a loyal address and spoke for many. For 60 years, Your Majesty has given dedicated and exemplary service to the people of this country and the Commonwealth. Sixty years ago this morning, the nation had been stunned when the BBC interrupted its programmes to announce the death of the Queen's father, King George VI. This is London. It was announced from Sandringham at 10.45 today, February the 6th, 1952, that the King, who retired to rest last night in his usual health, passed peacefully away in his sleep earlier this morning. It's hard now fully to appreciate the impact the death of Britain's wartime king had on the country. The new queen, Elizabeth, was in Kenya at the time of her father's death. She was just 25 years old. She returned to London to be greeted by Prime Minister Winston Churchill and his cabinet. At her accession council, she pledged to continue the work of her beloved father and to serve Britain and the other countries of which she is monarch. This morning, on her last few days in Norfolk, before returning to Buckingham Palace, she was receiving the first of the thousands of greetings which will convey the country's thanks for 60 years of service. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, King's Lynn. Well, absolutely. I mean, Churchill treated her as a granddaughter with whom he fell in love in the most romantic, chivalrous manner. It was a, it was a charming relationship. And I think she's off, she has once or twice said that of her prime ministers, Winston was the most amusing. And uh, so if she was a grandchild to Churchill, she's now a grandmother figure to Cameron. And all her prime ministers have been very, very discreet about the weekly meetings they've each had with her. And, but all of them have said it's been incredibly valuable. And you know, she could say to Cameron, if the subject came up, well, I see your problem. And this is how Winston dealt with that. Or Harold Macmillan had a similar question to ask in the 1960s. It's an extraordinary fund of knowledge and experience. It doesn't exist in any other country. When we look at uh, the pattern of the celebrations for the Jubilee, people will be looking back clearly. What for you will be the prime features of this 60-year reign? Well, I think sort of gratitude, really, for, to, to this woman who has personified our country through this turmoil of social change for the last 60 years. It's quite extraordinary. And monarchies need magic, and republics don't. And she's magic in the sense of how she started. She went up an, a tree in Africa, a princess, and came down that tree, a queen. That's magic for you. And she has had a sort of magical touch because she's, she's never that put a foot wrong politically. She's steered through very polit difficult political times and she's always been absolutely perfect, represented the country and the heart of the country. One, one philosopher, Roger Scruton, said the monarchy is the light above politics. And that's rather a nice image for what she, the role she performs, I think. S some of the turbulence has not been political. Um, there's been tragedy too. Um, when you say that she hasn't put a foot wrong, does that extend to, to, to all of those episodes, do you think? I think so. I mean, if, you're trying to, if you're talking about the death of Diana, mm -hmm. it was an, a moment of extraordinary emotional turmoil which nobody expected. And she saw her duty in the first few days after Diana's death to look after her grandsons. And I don't think anybody would question that. And when she came back to London and saw all the grieving crowds and spoke to them outside the palace and then gave that very soothing uh, emollient and rather beautiful television address in which she said, I speak to you as a grandmother and as your queen. Then it was like balm on the wound and everything was right again. And that's her magic. Well, the day's being marked today, the accession, but of course, the big celebration's happening in, in early June um, and culminating in that Tuesday when we'll have the processions and the service at St. Paul's. Um, 
what will you be doing on the day? <laughs> I'm not sure yet, but I hope I'll see the river pageant two days before on the, I think that's on the Sunday, is yes, it? And it's going to be a wonderful event, so the whole thing. And, you know, the Golden Jubilee was superb. And uh, I may be actually part of the time in my village and where I spend as much time as possible in Cornwall, where the children this year, as 10 years ago, reenact, will reenact the coronation. Well, we may see you on the day as well. So uh, let's hope so. so. William, thank you very much. Good thank to see you. you. William Shawcross there.